first episode of the podcast, whatever you end up calling it. Uh, first guest here, BBK Dragoon, the legend himself right here. You say hello, BB. Hello, you're the legend, man, not me. Thanks for having me. This is exciting, and I'm uh, curious to see what the title of this thing is going to be, right? <laughs> I told you in the, the pre-roll, you got to ask like chat GPT. Give me mm. 10 different ideas and then just let it go crazy. Every Halo pun you could think of. I mean, I, I, actually, that's how I wrote a lot of my uh, my Christmas cards. <laughs> this Did year. you really? <laughs> I was like, I need, I need some help to kind of differentiate them a little bit. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, it's kind of sad that Christmas is already gone, man. I was just like thinking about that. The decorations are coming down. Valentine's Day is mm -hmm. in the stores right now. Like, oh yeah, it's like it's too quick. I swear, <laughs> it's way too quick. We need a mid-year Christmas or something like that. Yeah, if anyone here is unfamiliar, which you should be, what you're doing if you're watching Halo content online on YouTube, and you don't know this legend right over here, then you're doing YouTube wrong. BBK, he's a FPS fan, big time Halo guy. And uh, thought we kind of jump on, talk about the recent events going on with Halo, and some just kind of general questions and some viewer questions as well. A little rapid fire at the end on top of that, but uh, I guess uh, there's something a little special about you, Mr. BBK. Uh, yes. What is that? Yeah. And it's uh, <laughs> that apparently you got a little bit of a uh, early fun times with Halo Infinite as a forerunner for That's Halo right. Infinite. And I was wondering if you're able to talk about that a little bit, like what the experience of that was to be able to be so early within the development of this game to see like what happened. Like I see the little emblem, the little, uh, the little oh, thing yeah, yeah, back yeah. there as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's always Maybe. reversed on the camera, the little forerunner thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, how was, was, experience? it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's funny. I told you before you recorded, I'm like, I gotta go find the talking points because everybody in the, the program, right? Super non-disclosure agreements on everything. And so there's <clears throat> a pretty small list of stuff that we're allowed to talk about. And uh, so I'll just try and remember <laughs> what it is because I couldn't find that document. But in 2019, uh, Microsoft, I think it was like 10 or 11 people that 343 picked uh, to come out to the studio and then to do like ongoing tests and surveys and stuff. People who like participate in flights now probably have a sense of kind of what it is, right? Where you test something specific and then you give very specific feedback on that and maybe it materializes, maybe it doesn't. Um, and that was very similar to what we saw back in like 2019. Um, and yeah, it was super early Halo Infinite days, but also at the same time, like with game dev, also not like games take a really long time to make and, and be built. And so it was really cool. I think really the only things that I can share is like everybody that I met was incredible, like getting to to talk with creators and pro players and people that you've kind of like looked up to forever and find out they're incredibly down to earth. Everybody's super chill and everybody loves Halo it was crazy. And same thing like with the people we met at 343, they're all super passionate about Halo. They're all really smart about like specific facets of Halo, like some the lore people and the design people. And, and it just was sort of like a dream come true, like very pinch me like, wow. But yeah, on the whole, it was really cool. And then the group expanded. Uh, the next year, there was supposed to be uh, another trip, but COVID and all that stuff happened. And um, it was interesting to see the game dev process, like what a modern, like big studio, like how the sausage is made and just realizing it takes an absolute army and what seems sometimes like a relatively simple fix could impact like hundreds of people in all these different departments and stuff. Um, so super grateful for the opportunity. And um, yeah, I'm... I wish we could say more, right? I wish we could share all these these cool stories and amazing things. And um, but at the same time, it's like these NDAs are, are pretty wild. So mm -hmm. uh, it was a good experience to just get a taste of what the the industry is like. And what shocked me the most is like literally everybody there is super passionate. Everybody there wants to make like the best thing they possibly can. Um, and so that that was really refreshing and cool to see. And a nerd out about a bunch of just like old school Halo things. And you could mention a map from like. Halo 2's DLC and instantly everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know about that. And the, the VR spawns <laughs> over here and the you know shotguns over there. And it's like, okay, awesome. Legit. <laughs> yeah, I remember like seeing the the list of forerunners, and I was like, okay, these is this is a good list of people. A pretty good variety of people, too. You like you have some people that are super like in the weeds when it comes to like, competitive stuff. You have some yeah. more casual people, and you have like, you know, straight up YouTubers and Twitch streamers and stuff like that. So it was a it wasn't just like your hardcore Halo fans, which you know, everyone there was I would consider her like a, a serious fan of Halo. Like Halo is kind of like the bread and butter, um, but it wasn't just like one type of player, which is a really cool thing about Halo is that there's so many ways to enjoy it. 
It seems like yep. they try to get a good variety of that between like yeah. and a and ton casual. of feedback channels too. Mm-hmm. Like not to cut you off, but like the Microsoft as a company is such a, a behemoth, and they're really skilled at like all of their processes. And so um, I know that there was many different sources of feedback, and they're able to synthesize that into what we ultimately got. And I think they do the same thing these days, right? Uh, with testing the new network uh, playlist, right? In Halo Infinite, the new network model, right? For squad battle, that playlist just went away, but survey went out, you could have the chance to fill it out. And those processes are, are pretty similar to the stuff that, you know, people have been going through since the MCC inside mm-hmm. days. So anyway, it was, it was rad. That's probably like the length of what I could say before I, you know, say something yeah. silly and get a call from Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, next question I got for you here, Mr. BBK Dragoony, is uh, like how do you feel game. about, <laughs> how do you feel about Halo Infinite in 2024? Now you say that because a lot of people have been seeing, or I should say that people have been saying that this game is feeling rather content complete, feature complete even at yeah. this point right now. Um, so what is the next thing that, we could look forward to, you think, when it comes to Halo Infinite in this year? I think the new networking model is like where I want to start because obviously that's what was most recently tested. Uh, I want to pick your brain about it and find out what you thought. So I only got to play a handful of games on it. And what I did play was like shooting feels remarkably uh, better in the sense that it does feel like my shots, I have immediate feedback that they're landing or they aren't. And I feel like the game is also like less jittery overall because Infinite always has had this weird jank jitter to me the way like it just feels i'm on an older pc too so that could be part of it i've never played this on like a a crazy new like 40 80 rig or something like that it did feel like jumping back in time as soon as you throw a grenade or a projectile you're like oh this is like it's halo 5 or it's like halo 4 (laughs) like if you've played halo a long time so many of those little old ghosts of the previous systems you're like oh it's it's clear this is like halo 5 dot 5 or whatever networking model put into infinite. So I know there's some jank. I saw some videos from Mint Blitz where like skewer doesn't really play that great and mongoose physics or vehicle physics when they touch players is sort of funky. If they can iron that out, I want to see that new model in the rotation as soon as possible because I I did feel like it was pretty nice. I felt pretty spoiled and I want to go play like ranked banded evos with that game type. So I'm going to before we like think about anything else in 2024 because I have a few ideas there. I want to know, what did you think about the networking model? Do you think it's going to come into play Q1, Q2? Uh, Good question. Reverse question, I guess I should say. (laughs) Is that, uh, honestly, I've played a decent amount of squad battles, but I don't think I've played it enough to really like dive deep and like even like notice those kind of things of like ski or not landing sometimes or... Uh, I did see like some things like blood shots happening. I didn't experience yeah. that. I mean, to honestly, like I didn't directly know as much of a difference uh, personally, but um, I know that if I really delved into it, I probably could notice like, you know, like if you're like peeking, you know, jiggle peek in a corner, you get shot around it or something like yeah. that. You're like, yeah, maybe that does, it does that happen with the new network model. Do you, if you notice anything like that? I didn't play enough to notice. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like my confession is I was playing Halo 2 MCC uh, <laughs> like halfway through this. Like I would be curious what the survey results say. If it is like fairly positive, like on the majority, people are saying, yes, this is a net win, get it in the game. Then I think that's an easy uh, PR win in the early start of the year for Halo Infinite. Um, and in terms of like setting the stage for the year, if the competitive players are happy with it and it, it makes the online space a little bit better, then I'm, I think, yay, let's let's go for it. And you can sort out the weird physics and the thing. It's still a janky game. Let's be honest. Mm. Like Infinite still has a lot of um, strange things. And I think that's what a, what a hard task to write, make a game that has to run on the original Xbox One and the series consoles and PC all in a cross-play environment. How are they still supporting my 2013 DVR, like this old yeah. school box, like that's really cool. But at the same time, will there be a point like Destiny where they just say, hasta la vista, it's just series moving forward. I don't think that's the case. I think since there's been talk about whatever the next Halo thing is in development, that Infinite's just probably going to ride out however many more seasons they have planned until whatever the next new thing is. And I didn't think there was going to be a new thing for a while. I thought it was going to be like Halo Infinite 2.0 or whatever. But now it seems like very clearly, or maybe not very clearly, there's a lot of talk about like LinkedIn posts and uh, 
right? The hiring things on 343's site. I may be jumping ahead in your, your notes, but it does feel like everybody's conversation is now like, yo, what's the next new Halo game thing, right? It feels like a foregone conclusion. Infinite's just going to get more seasons, maybe a few new weapons and maps, and we know what's expected. I don't think there's anything shocking coming in 2024 for Infinite, but that's, I could be wrong. I want to know what you think. You're closer to the news than me. Uh, see, like, I haven't really seen anything that looks like super exciting for 2024 for Halo Infinite, which actually yeah. has me a little concerned. Like, yeah, a new networking model is great. Having yeah. the game feel better, be more fluid and stuff like that. Fantastic. Absolutely needed. But I don't really think that's anything that would really bring people back, you know? You know yeah. Like, you think, like, yeah. your, your casual player who hasn't played Halo in six months, like, hey, don't worry, your shot's hit now. I'd be like, Okay, but I might as well just playing Team Slayer, you know? It's like the bare minimum, right? But that's actually kind of one thing. That's the reason why I wanted to bring it up, because I'm like, I can definitely see like a a, a solid decline in the player base if nothing really that exciting happens with Halo Infinite this year. Uh, Just because we had so many big things that we looked forward to throughout 2023, especially with like Firefight. Like that's a huge social casual mode that people have been wanting for so long. And it plays great in Halo Infinite too. Yeah, and yeah. The I don't I mean the lack of seeing any big thing on the horizon makes me worry that there's like not really much to get people excited about. The yeah. only thing I could really see happening is like if we did like a similar thing with like the Halo Three refuel playlist, where we like you play on a bit on nostalgia, make it like some Forge kind of playlist, like a limited time mode kind of thing. You're like, oh, okay, I gotta jump in and play that because like I had coworkers like text me like, dude, I jumped in to play the yeah. Halo Three playlist. It was awesome, you know. Yeah, it yep. was yeah you know, stuff like that gets people excited, but. Uh, like I don't really see much, but like I don't see any crazy new game mode happening. I see yeah. a lot of like Forge creations being added into playlists and things like that, which are fun, cool. Yeah. Uh, but nothing I think really that kind of would give you like that huge like shot of adrenaline to the the player base. Look, you scored a crazy big win in season five, like you mentioned. Halo Three refueled was obviously like a great talking point. Um, personally, I think it was cool, but my gosh, they they screwed the opportunity of that playlist by making it sweatier. In my ranked matches, right? Oh um, yeah. <laughs> make it a ranked playlist or don't. Like I don't I, yeah. this this sort of social features being pruned away from modern games thing is really at the forefront. Um, but again, not getting side sidetracked there. You're totally right. I don't think there's anything they could do in 2024 that would radically change the trajectory of Halo Infinite. They could have a great season and they're gonna have a nice spike and it brings in maybe some new people but we're probably going to see similar numbers now until the next Halo game. I really think that's probably their next big opportunity to win back a larger audience. But one of the things I regularly think about and I say, like, people want to see Halo succeed. I think there's a lot of people from outside this space who want to see Halo do well. I think was uh, Jake uh, on Twitter. What is it? Jake Sucky Lucky, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, he's still playing Infinite. And like there's sometimes we always get this little boost from people who are outside of the the regular creation content scene who are rooting for this game to do well. And so I do think if they land like a nice set of updates, get the game in a better spot, that amplifies the potential for the next Halo game to do well. So um, the only other notes I had put about ideas in 2024 is, you know, happy about the new leadership. I feel like this, this year, season four onward, we got to see the tangible results of like, uh, the new changes and having Pierre or whatever, whatever has swapped, there's a sentiment shift and things really seem to be going in the right direction. Um, yeah, I think we're lacking prestige re- rewards. I wanted to talk about that too, because mm. here we are, and I don't think there's anything in the game other than the Master Chief armor that you look at and you go, that's sweet, that guy worked hard to get that, that's really rad, you know? Like, I, I want to go and chase after that kind of pursuit. Whereas previous games really did a great job of of having certain pieces i feel like or even more modern games do a good job of win a thousand matches get this this coding win two thousand ranked matches get this crazy cool uh you know weapon kit or whatever so i feel like those those kind of elements would be useful for existing players that probably wouldn't bring in anybody new so i think it would help definitely with retention that's actually kind of one of the things i was going to bring up in my next question was uh was one thing you would like to see come to halo infinite in 2024 and honestly like yeah a grindable app you know reason to unlock something would be uh absolutely perfect like i've been playing like i said i mentioned again i've been playing a lot of modern warfare 3 been loving the yeah. multiplayer and that side of things yeah they have weekly challenges where like you have to yeah. complete like five out of the 
10 or 8 challenges or whatever, you yeah. unlock like this kit for a weapon that you can play around that like, completely changes how it plays around, stuff like that. Yes. You can also do that with like, cos- it also comes with cosmetics and like it's just kind of permanent little like week by week playlists or uh, challenges you can complete. Which yeah. I think is something that I think Halo Infinite's really missing because it seems totally. like everything you can unlock, besides the Master Chief armor set from Infinite, which is awesome, that's a great yep. reward for max rank. Yep. But everything else seems like it's just kind of either it's, it's tied behind some kind of paywall most of the time. Yes. Besides like these operations, there's a way to strike a balance between both. I hate the counter argument of like, well, they have to make money. It's like, do you know how many people bought the you know the CE armor set, myself yeah. included? <laughs> yeah, they're right. going to make money for sure. Mm-hmm. It just there's got to be a balance. I'm pretty sick of like Battle Pass and FOMO and the modern like archetype. And I think if you look on YouTube, plenty of people are. It's a horse that's been beaten to death at this point. It was a great evolution from the loot box nightmare that was like 2016 to 19 ish, and I think it is time players start asking for like an evolution of what's next beyond just battle pass and FOMO stuff and infinite to Halo's credit. I love the way the battle pass lets you go back in time, right? If you own that battle pass, you can equip it. You can go, you can uh, always finish the thing up, which is really nice in comparison with other like modern FPS games, but we are super duper missing those prestigious commendation style awards. So I, again, on my break, I went back, I played more Starcraft Two, another game that like, I've loved for over a decade. And I was just looking through some of the decals and the awards and things. And it's like, oh, this icon that's next to my base in every match, it shows I've won 751v1 matches. And that's sort of cool. If I'm, you know, am in a match and I see like, okay, that Protoss has that icon. This dude has definitely put in the time. He's hit some of these. It carries more weight with me than like, all right, that guy finished his battle pass or that guy Mm -hmm. bought the thing in the shop. So if they could... It's not something I really expect them to do in 2024, but I hope they would look back at things like Halo Reach and recognize you had such a great model. You had an incredible model that just needed a little bit of modern touches, um, and it could have just been amazing. If Infinite's like two years or three years more, then yeah, I I totally want some of those features to go after. I really would like, and they're not going to do this, the Press X to Party Up feature from Halo 3 return. Oh my gosh. So after a match in Halo 3, <laughs> you could press X and stick around in that lobby. Let's say you enjoyed playing against the opponents and you wanted to run it back for like a rematch, or you really liked your teammates and you wanted to keep matchmaking with them. You pressed X, there was a nice visual cue. You could see that you've committed. You're like, hey, I want to stick around. And, <clears throat> excuse me, other players could decide if they wanted to. So many of my Xbox 360 friends came from that feature. I made so many Halo buddies from it. It's so lonely just running these modern games and these like match ends, algorithm flies, you get a whole new group of people and you never get to bump back into those those people. You don't make friends, you don't create that community. And it's a huge missed opportunity. I'm sure they have all the data and the surveys and whatever to back up their system that they have. But I'm telling you just from a raw emotional level, there are so many times I wish, especially with MCC, where finally I got this guy on my team who's slaying. And like, we know if we partied up, we would be able to just run the next like six or seven matches. And yet my only option is to go find that guy, send him a message, try and do like an invite. It's so much harder than it used to be to build out a community to go play this game with and that feature to me alone i don't think that's that destructive to their engagement based matchmaking experience i feel like that would still be something that's useful i don't know maybe it's a silly thing and, and maybe it won't come back but i miss it so much and mm-hmm. it was yeah it's devastating that games don't have that anymore or at least fps games yeah the, those classic halo games especially three and reach but also yeah. two as well where they had like these built-in social features within the game just yeah. to help connect people and then also also back then i think the gaming culture was definitely different you know yeah. a lot of people had more mics on back then than they do now yeah. Yeah. mainly just because like i think a lot of people just like mute everybody <laughs> mute the lobby because like totally you got you got a lot of people who just yell nonsense and just like man i just want to sit down and just play you know yeah yeah for <laughs> real it got it got bad and people just didn't mm. want to deal with it anymore but like if i'm gonna party up with somebody and we play three or four games together I'm probably gonna like put my mic and be like yo what's up that was a sick game yeah and right? maybe it goes from there right mm-hmm. but 
Do you think they'd ever had that back? Or do you think there's like an active reason like why they're just like, no, we must protect people from the, the toxicity? <laughs> um, I, I don't see it happening. Uh, yeah. Just mainly because like that's like a whole new system to be added in that might also kind of break the matchmaking algorithm that they have right now, which yeah, I'm sure on their end is working just as, a, as intended because it hasn't really <laughs> been tweaked since the launch of the game that yeah. much. Uh, so, uh, some more social features or some kind of way to connect players a little bit more would be fantastic. I mean, yeah. like, like we've seen this with other games, like being able to like allow like pregame lobby chats and stuff like that to kind of just... Yeah you know, say hi, talk a little trash, you know, make connections and things like that rather yeah. than just shoot random gamer tag. That might as well even, I mean, it doesn't even feel like they're even players on the other side. They're just like really intelligent bots, you know? Yeah. That's a great way to put it. It does. You don't feel that same connection, right? You're mm -hmm. never going to see him again, probably at least in infinite. You're not now match composers coming this year. And I think that's oh, yeah. a good idea. And I think that's exciting because, um, probably the number one thing that's like I've burned out on, on infinite is just the meta sidekick spam and AR starts like I don't love it and it's just like everywhere outside of ranked I think ranked has such a nice sandbox that that's like the one place I really enjoy in the game and so hopefully if match composer similar to infinite maybe there will be like a precision slayer option right where it's got more of the bandit evo starts or like a BR start I know it doesn't play great on all of the, the maps but the sidekick spam now that mm -hmm. we're like two and a half years into this, I'm like done. Maybe not two and a half, but yeah, we're we're moving on with infinite. The sidekick AR starts. I've just had I'd had my fill of it. Like FFA, when FFA is there, it's like, dude, this playlist would be amazing. I just don't want to deal with this starting <laughs> weapon. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, you can't veto for BRs anymore, can you? <laughs> yeah, I say yeah. Veto feature, please come back. I know it never will. From three four three, from Sketch specifically, mentioning that three four three has ambitions beyond infinite. Yeah, and seeing the recent leaks—not say leaks, but information we've seen with like LinkedIn profile saying that an yeah. unannounced Halo release has been in the works since twenty twenty two. Yeah, makes you wonder. What do you think the time frame we can expect when it comes to like how long Infinite is going to run for? And when can we expect the next Halo experience? Earlier, the better would be great, but I know it needs all the time in the oven <laughs> oh to my finish. Gosh, yes, I don't, yeah. If we have another unfinished launch, <laughs> dude, the, the pitchforks will be fully sharpened. Dude, that would make it a full decade of just unfinished <laughs> releases for, him yeah. for Halo. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, that's part of the, like, I'm happy the leadership change has occurred. Because at a certain point, you're like, there's there's quite a long list here of the same thing happening over and over again where at the very end of like a game cycle it's in that really great spot and it's like if you would have just taken the time a little bit longer in the oven stick the landing more people will last so i'm gonna say holiday 2025 right if they are working on a new multiplayer or single player kind of project i don't think it's this year i bet it's gonna be like a, a fall or like a q3 q4 2025 thing I wish it was sooner rather than later, but if we think about it, like Infinite will go into life support for like the last, you know, three seasons or whatever. But there's that long ramp up period to where six months before the release, you're going to have a big swing of people coming back the way MCC really grew before Infinite uh, dropped. Yeah, I mean, that's that would be my best guess. I could be wrong. Halo games take a long time to create, but we know, right? Um, Max Hoberman's team were working on something Halo related. The whole leaker news now is right. Tatanka was scrapped. It was scrapped a while ago. And then it's maybe they've transitioned into working on something new. Maybe this new thing that you just asked about in your question, like the stuff that Sketch is referring to, maybe it's all rolled into just one singular project. I'm still in the, the boat that I think a BR could definitely work in Halo and it would be really fun, but it should never take precedent over a really good core Halo game. So if they've said, you know, maybe this is a mode in our new game, or maybe we'll revisit Tatanka at another time and we're going to focus on a more typical Halo style release, then I am crazy pumped. But literally every bit of what I just said is nothing but speculation. So yeah. who who <laughs> knows, right? What what do you think? I mean, yeah, we've been speculating about Tatanka for like two years now or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Like it, it almost feels like it's like a confirmed mode that never yeah. was officially announced or confirmed in any capacity. 
just yeah. like that window central from like jazz Corden, like like two years ago mentioned it yeah <laughs> and yeah. then we're just like where is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the thing is like yeah i think like a battle royale would work really well with halo or with some kind of like large scale battle mode like the sandbox is definitely there you got the yep. vehicles you got the weapons and even like the small some of the smaller mechanics that like were introduced with infinite i think would work really well like how you can use the power-ups when when you want to rather than just you you know activating right when you pick it up yep. uh, being able to drop weapons uh, oh yeah you know life pings and things like that contextual pinging like that's huge and large scale like battle royale type of modes that's in the yep. game as well like really yep. the only thing that's missing is like the networking system that be able to support and like a yep. map that could you know and then randomize some spawns and you know you've kind of got yourself a br but yep. uh I think something like that would totally work. Uh, though I do feel like right, right now at this point, like you really have such an established, uh, I don't want to say community, but a list of really popular battle royale games, which would be yeah. very difficult to compete against like Warzone, Fortnite, and Apex. Yeah. Uh, those three right, just take up so much space. But I do feel like there is room for Halo within that discussion to like have something like that. But, you know, VR has been like the FPS mode for the last like 10 years. It would be more interesting to see uh, Halo be more on the forefront rather than on the following side of trends and things like yeah. that. You yeah. know, everyone keeps talking about, you know, the new cool things like extraction shooters, right? Like it's kind of like yeah. the new cool thing. Yeah. And you now that'd be interesting if like Halo could pull something off, not like that off. Cause like the cool, like, like we know of like Tarkov, right? Cause the whole point of Tarkov is like you jump in you find things within the world which levels up your character so the next time you jump back in you're more powerful yeah and then you, and then you die recycle repeats kind of thing it would be interesting to see how they would do that with halo i do think there's possibility of that yeah uh but it would be you know you have to dive into the weeds of like exactly how you would do it kind of thing i'm really happy that infinite is a traditional like multiplayer style game mm -hmm. for the most part i'm really happy they didn't come out the door chasing the br trend and right now, I feel like a bunch of FPS developers are going to be chasing the extraction trend. Like, Marathon will drop. I'm sure it will be successful because it's Bungie. And then a bunch of other studios are going to just go and, and chase that trend. And I would hate to see them sacrifice like that core identity and core audience to go after an audience you don't have. I feel like that is such a faux pas. It's so many... Um, I mean, let's face it. Games are just businesses. They're huge money makers at this point. And the... People with the money at the top are going to chase after the trends that are super successful. I still really appreciate the games like a Counter-Strike, where Counter-Strike 2 is still Counter-Strike. They're not changing the formula super radically. Um, even the jumps between the non-sprint and the sprint Halo games, right? They each have their own merits. I'm not going to, you know, old man grumble, grumble about like sprint being in my Halo. I still wish we'd get a, a non-sprint Halo game, but Halo has still sort of remained Halo for the most part at its core. And so whatever they're producing next, I truly hope that it honors like that core Halo audience um, from the get-go instead of chasing trends. We've had a decade of chasing little smaller trends within the sandbox. Those little things don't get you a new audience just because you have sprint in your game or you've got this particular mode. It might get you a subset, but it's not going to overall like explode that fan base in my opinion infinite i think is exactly how i would want a halo game to play in the modern era you know like yeah i don't mind sprint, sprint and clamber like i don't mind it a whole lot and i think the, and i feel like it's almost like what halo 3 would play out like if it was released in 2021 rather than 2007 in my opinion and so it'd be interesting to see how they make another halo multiplayer when the multiplayer gameplay for infinite has been pretty much universally received as like this is really good we like this you know so where do you go from that or do you just make a separate like standalone experience that can tie into infinite or something kind of ways so, or you keep supporting infinite as like your core multiplayer experience but then you create something new like an instruction shooter or a battle royale or a new campaign or something yeah. around those lines where you could still because like i think infinite like satisfies that 4v4, 8v8, now 12v12, like core multiplayer experience that you've had with Halo for 20 plus years. And I would like to see added on to it because I feel like you would just re-release Infinite's multiplayer if you're going to put it in a separate game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I... I still think it's going to be like a Halo Infinite 2.0. It won't be called that, right? I think it's going to be like its own 
whatever they, they name it. Hey, what did you say? Halo infinite or something? The most infinite? <laughs> so, something like yeah, that. Right, yeah, yeah, I think it was that's what I said, yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, the sandbox doesn't need to like completely divert. I think it is important to refresh things, like having the Banded Evo in comp is good for spectators and it's too soon to know like we're going to need some events behind us to really look at it under the microscope to see like was this a good shift i don't want banded evo forever i think it would be useful to every few years update in not a substantial way but shift the the sandbox up a little bit so it makes it enjoyable and so i think infinite like you said did a really good job of appeasing i think elements of classic and elements of modern for halo i think there's tons of room for improvement but i echo what you're saying i don't think they should reinvent the wheel that would be like horrible like stick to the core principles that have worked when you're looking at that sandbox i'm always going to lean more to some of the classic isms and i i think the speed at which like halo 2 plays without sprint uh, is phenomenal. Like it's super fun to go play 4v4 Halo 2 and you remember like this game is crazy action packed and I'm not having to deal with, you know, sight lines and map distances that have been like changed substantially to account for this, you know, augmented movement. I'm not saying take sprint out of the next game. It's an argument that's dead, right? We don't need to talk about it anymore. But what I am saying is like Halo Infinite Tur or Infinite Est or whatever keep a lot of the elements of the sandbox that you have found that have worked with infinite you you did a good job just refine on it be additive like what you just said uh i was saying next question here is a little more of current events thing uh we did just get the season two official trailer of the halo tv show and i know probably i'm sure people watching this video are probably fast forward like don't care <laughs> you know but yeah. since it is kind of recent events i wanted to chat with you about it i would say that the season two trailer kind of goes hard like it feels like a completely different tonal shift to what we have with the show, but that could just be rose into glasses, hindsight 2020 kind of thing. But what are your thoughts on the halo show? What do you think about the trailer? And are you interested in season two at all? I guess. I think the trailer did a good job making me more interested than I was Uh fair point. I'll always own up to it on the lore side of things. I'm not that into the lore side of Halo. Uh, loved the campaigns. I've read like the first book, what Fall of Reach or whatever it's mm. called. Um, super sweet book. But I'm not that up to, to speed. I watched the first couple of episodes of season one of the Halo show and then definitely checked out very quickly thereafter. <laughs> and yeah. um, I would agree that season two, the trailer, especially that final shot where it's in space and you just see all of the Covenant ships, like, that made me interested. Some of those shots and the visual design made me like really interested to go check it out. But I'm still in the, I'm still wondering like why they made it this non canon, totally different story set when that universe could tell a really great periphery tale that interacts with Master Chief without having to be at like the central focus. So, I mean, I, 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 my knowledge of season one of the show is the videos that overview some of the stuff and seeing some of the scenes out of context. I'm just like, what, what on yeah. earth are you, you doing? So, you know, the new showrunner, I think thematically is bringing it back, but it's not saved for me. And it would, it's, I'm going to wait till we're like halfway through season two. I'll look and see if there are people like, yeah, this is rad. Then I'll hop back in. But uh, no, I'm not, I'm not that on board to be honest. <laughs> what do you uh, what do you think and i don't think you're wrong in saying the trailer goes hard because i think it does if i remember correctly the season one trailer i thought was pretty good as well but yeah yeah they're just trailers snippets kind of thing from my impression of it is that it seems like their fall of reach is going to be a thing that's going to be happening throughout the season mm -hmm. and it's going to be like humans on their back foot retreating trying to find a way to get whatever they need to be accomplished done kind of thing so yep. we because we all know the ending like they yep. lose reach that happens but it's going to be, yeah, be a story of like how they do it and the hardships you go through it and the in the small achievements that they get throughout that season. Yeah. And it seems like they're kind of like kind of going with that tone as well. There's yep. some aspects I thought were kind of maybe more tied back to previous lore that I thought was like, oh, OK, that sounds interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a sh it's a show. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, 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 it's it's going to be interesting to see like um if they try to make master chief like the main character 
yeah. which I feel like they kind of misunderstood in season one. We're like, yes. yeah, in Halo, Master Chief, yeah, you're the main character, right? Yeah. You're the center Hollow of the show. Vessel. Yeah. But <laughs> the reason why you Master Chief is the main character or is like what makes the game interesting is the surrounding cast around Master Chief who totally. play as little aspects of who Master Chief is or who uh, how you feel within the game. And yeah. so it's not like who is Master Chief? Like honestly, we don't really care. And yeah. it's more about the interactions around Master Chief kind of thing, if that yes. makes sense, if I'm making that yeah, sound properly. It is. But no, uh, I agree fully. Like the <laughs> the Hulk that is Master Chief, you're supposed to occupy. There's plenty of like Vidoc moments from the Bungie era talking specifically about that. And so maybe that's why it's just so weird and off-putting when they're like, yeah, he's the central focus here. And of course, you're going to have to take the helmet off to connect with this person. And so all of a sudden, it's just like, man, you could have told... There are so many cool characters in this universe. It has become a huge universe. Just do something periphery. And then like the mind blowing moment when in like season or episode 10, you're like, oh my gosh, there's the chief right there. No mm. way. You know? So true. Yeah. Like it's honestly like Spartans aren't really that common. So the, for how yeah. common they are within the show. Cause like in real life, you see a Spartan, you're like, oh my God. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like God walking amongst men kind of thing. Yeah. But like yep. in the show, it doesn't really play that off. But it seems like with the season two trailer that they uh they there was a lot of focus on uh riz they had one of the, the supporting spartans yep. and then uh, we saw like you know we're like with a tear with like family and friends it look like or something like that and i think that would be a way to really explore what it's like to be like a human more than like a spartan kind of thing have the surrounding yeah. cast kind of experience like that and then show that to the audience because if anyone would be the last person to get the memo of like it's okay to cry would be Master Chief, you know, yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. Totally. And that, that th I, I hope they go that route. We kind of have to wait and see. From what I got from like the general storytelling that it looks like they're gonna try to pull yeah. off, it seems very much more simplistic, kind of almost more like action storytelling where it's like you have a simple goal. You just it seems like there's something with a comms tower involved with that trailer that they showed multiple times that like maybe it's like need to get to the comms tower to let the humanity know that reach has fallen kind of thing and then maybe mm. that's the story and the story is the journey to get to that point kind of thing kind of like in uh was it 1917 right with that war film the world war mm. one film where like yeah, yeah the yeah, story yeah. is like trying to pass that message to the, the front line saying don't attack kind of thing and the yeah. story is going what the, the character's experience going from a to b was which was a really yeah. good film i thought it was a really great kind of war film yeah so maybe something the along those kind of lines but expectations need to be held back a little bit because uh yeah season one was wild i never expected master chief to have a sex scene when i think of a halo show <laughs> see that's the thing that's all that stands out in my mind is like yeah. i've seen screen caps of the butt shot and i'm like okay i'm out <laughs> no way dude like i mean uh, if this uh, it's one of those deals where it's like if i had a family member or a friend who watched the halo show and they're like knew that i made halo content i feel embarrassed and be like you yeah, know no no it's not like i promise <laughs> like it's nothing you know like this also i will say um just a critique and it's so minor but the color palette for this show is so gray it is an yeah. anti-depressant commercial like it's the <laughs> same like palette where it's just i mean it's it's a stylistic choice and it's definitely like your hdr style show where you watch it and you're like yeah nice it's mm -hmm. so dark i've got 18 shades of gray in there or whatever yeah, right. um so i i don't know i love halo 3's color palette and i think you know popping some Further saturation could be nice, but mm. yeah, who knows? Hope it's good. That's you know what I'll say. Hope it's good. I'll check it out later. You know, if people give recommendations, but otherwise, I'll be steering clear. For yeah, it. we'll see if there's a season three. I mean, season two was approved before the release of season one. Maybe they're waiting yeah. to see the reception of season two if they're going to make a season three. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, so I think this section we're going to go into some viewer questions. You can go as short or yeah. as long as you'd like with some of these. Oh, cool! Right on. Um, so the first one we hear is from Trigger Happy Freak says, since the team at 343 is way more different today than the 343 team before, and that certain affinity has come to aid 343 more with new Halo games, but what kind of things might we see about these new Halo games that might be different from past Halo games. So he's also says uh, more community driven or more in line with lore question. So this is more just like, let your imaginations run wild with this yeah. new 343 team and more support from certain affinity. What can we like expect? Okay, if you have been following Max Hoberman on Twitter, awesome. If you're not, you should go follow him. He is releasing so often these just 
big old threads of design documents and ideas he had during Halo 2 and Halo 3, from matchmaking to social features to all of these cool design ideas. And I love every one of them. I really like his philosophy, especially on the ideas when it comes to matchmaking design and philosophy, like the 50-50 win rate idea, you know, um, he's, he's talked about sometimes you want to have a hard match and sometimes an easier match and sometimes that really like medium style match. He talked about the clan features, all that stuff. So I am hoping with their collaboration uh, with certain affinity that some of Max's philosophies will take center stage and that will that will enter into more of the next Halo game. And it goes back to early in the podcast when I was saying, you know, press X to party up. I hope some simple things like that make their way into the game. And I would imagine that Max is going to have a lot of great um, influence when it comes to some of those designs and those ideas. When it comes to like gameplay, who knows? Like who's going to be the sandbox lead? Who's going to be the design lead, et cetera. That, that does pay, play a big focus, like whoever the senior role is in that part. But in terms of like more community focus, I feel like, that is infinite right now. Like the majority of like the great playlists, Squad Battle, for example, it's all community driven in terms of the maps that are chosen. And they're going to heavily rely on Forge for the rest of Infinite, I feel like. So I don't know if it's going to be more community focused. I think they're doing a, a pretty decent job there. Um, and then when he says lore, maybe he's talking on the campaign side. This question came up a bunch. Is the next Halo game open world or is it traditional? And the vibe that I see online anytime that survey goes out is people want a traditional, more linear style campaign again. So what, what do you think, Kev? I actually really like the open world idea of Halo Infinite. I mean, it opened, really opened up the realm for like campaign DLC to be a thing like, hey, this new island just floated in and it's like a snow map, yeah. basically, kind of thing. <laughs> it would have been cool, dude. Oh, yeah. But uh, obviously that's not happening. And I think uh, right now people are just craving for like just like a straightforward halo experience which we got some of that with infinite uh i think we've just kind of doubled down more on it because i think right now like the easiest grab the easiest dub for 343 is just to play off of nostalgia and just kind of give you like you know a six hour eight hour campaign it's like blockbuster action pack kind of thing no yep. not don't try to reinvent the the wheel just give us like you know something that people can just chew on for you know and enjoy and just kind of get back in those member berry feels and once you're in that kind of good state with the community then you can kind of branch off and go like, okay, now we're adding a battle royale because you know, kind of thing. Because at least you're, you're satiated with that aspect of the game. Because it feels like three four three has been, or actually every game three four three has released has been the, their most ambitious project yet. You know, yeah, yeah. or reinventing things like with, <laughs> especially with Halo Four, right? They really came out swinging with that one, swung a little too hard, honestly. But mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then Halo Five doing like the extra movement and the different art, you know, continuing with the weird art style, Infinite then reinventing the wheel again but in a more retro way but then having the, in the workload side of things basically starting from scratch again i yeah. just love to see him just be more additive re than uh reinventive that's the thing i'm yeah. looking forward to yeah the most out of this whole thing for the next halo game at least ninja of opulence asks what are your thoughts on operations and the 50 tier battle pass we had this season and do you think they might need changes or Fine as is. I am ready on this one. The quarter has been <laughs> put like in. BBK's got a shotgun. I'm ready. <laughs> I don't get spicy very often, but when it comes to the new operation thing, I'm going to continue to say it. When you launch the game and the operation splash uh, screen comes up, it's the first thing you see and it's telling you to go spend money on this operation pass. It does an absolutely horrible job of communicating you do not need to spend the money to buy that pass. If you play a very little amount, you'll get through those 20 tiers. No big deal in that limited time window. Even more frustrating is, you know, that feedback was voiced on the first operation. And then we had the winner one that just came in and the same exact thing was happening. Now, probably that feedback occurred while the team for the next operation were in the middle of their sprint. So they probably weren't going to alter the pathway or the traje trajectory. I get it. But it is really, um, it bothers me because there's a bunch of people in my comments, people who bought that pass, who didn't need it, who then voiced regret because it's like, I really thought in order to participate in this operation, I needed to do it. Instead of, if you don't unlock the things during the time window, you can go back and buy that operation to go and, and complete it later. That is not communicated very well when we made this transition. And it is a bummer. Because if you burn somebody once in that way where it feels like you're nickel and diming them because of 
you know, poor communication, that is just straight up bad. And that is super fixable and resolvable. And when you finish the pass, every time you finish a match, you get that splash screen again, right? And it's, it is a bummer because I overall think the shift to the 50 tier uh, pass and the operations thing is a positive change. But don't, don't do this to players. Like, I want to support Halo, I want to see this game succeed. I have no problem when I feel like they're on the right track going in and thinking about buying one of those, uh, like the CE skin, the Mark V skin, right? That was really cool and expensive, too much money, uh, in my opinion. But I don't have a problem because I feel like season four, season five, you guys did great. I want to support that kind of a thing. The moment you start doing these practices and don't change it quickly, it really makes me think there's somebody in the engagement department who's like, oh yeah, that's intentional. It's totally intentional that we made it opaque and a little bit ambiguous here. So that's, I'm off the soapbox now, but that's <laughs> what I think, man. It needs to change. I, yeah, I understand that for sure. But I do think also going with the 50 tiers, I think, and then also adding these operations, which are basically like side battle passes to like the main battle pass. Yep. I think business model wise, I think is the right way to go about doing it for Halo Infinite, especially since there were so many duplicates within the 100 tiers, like, just because of like the UI limitations that they mentioned previously, oh, yeah. kind of alleviated yeah. a little bit of that with uh, season five's battle pass. Because when you're like, oh, only fifty tiers, like I'm gonna burn through this super fast, and some people actually did. But then yep. you also have a twenty tier pass, and then you have another twenty tier pass within that season. Yeah. So really, it's like you're doing what, well, like math me real quick, ninety tiers right above actual content rather than so many duplicates. Yeah, and yep. also I think it's a great way for three four three to just can continue on like that trickle in type of revenue beyond outside of the store which is always yep. a huge point of contention within the halo community because like you know, just like jerry hook said like back in like before season two right there was always gonna be that pain point of going from like the the box model where you get everything you unlock yeah. it to free to play yeah. uh you know store model kind of thing so yeah. i don't think that that complaint's never gonna go away with halo you know but um I do think it's a good, I think it overall it's a better move for Halo with the, the battle pass and then the operations on the side. You know, when the, but I think also, yeah, playing into that film of like, if you don't buy into these operation passes, they do go away if you don't complete yeah. them. Um, I completed the the op combined operations. I bought into the the, the holiday one just because I really like the coding. I thought it looked cool. Yeah. Yeah, Which yeah, is like, yeah. you know, 500 credits. I'm like, sure. Yeah, I'll buy into mm -hmm. it, you know? So, yeah. I think overall it's a it's a positive ch ch change. I feel compared yeah. to what we had previously because like the uh, the previous events that we had weren't really doing much for me, even though it's basically like yeah. the same kind of con yeah. same style of content, right, or style of delivery, but just uh, a little more permanent, a little less. Uh, I guess it's like FOMO in a way, right? But like when you see yeah. the same event like return like three or four times over throughout the season, it's just like okay, I don't care, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, like like I said, overall an improvement. Would you would you agree with that? Overall an improvement for sure. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going back to what we said earlier in the show. I'm past the battle pass kind of model. I don't play for the cosmetics. Um, and I hope LTMs can be looked at differently kind of moving forward. Is it a more meaningful experience to play rather than here's 20 things for you to go after, right? And that's I don't know. what this new season, the new operation felt like was that. Yeah, one. yeah. And it's whatever. It's Christmas. I get it. Mm. Like this is this is the time of the year where everybody starts taking off time. But I'm I'm really hopeful the FPS scene starts to discover new ways to evolve past. Here's a hundred you pay, you know, your, your 10 bucks and here's a hundred new tiers to go after in the mm. case of Halo 50 new tiers. So overall, Good shift though. Nobody likes unlocking the left, you know, knee pad and then the right knee pad. That's dumb. So yeah. Win win overall. But man, fix the communication on the UI front. It's so silly. Like they could take that splash screen away. I know they have the API to where they can do email marketing, right? Where let's say the Christmas event just ended and they know that I didn't finish the pass. Shoot me a, a nurture email that literally says, Hey, you missed out on this super sick item. Right now it's on sale in the store for just this week. You know, you can get access to the pass this way. That's the kind of targeted communication that could be really successful. And then I'm going, oh, sweet. Well, they obviously have recognized like where I'm at. They're, you know, paying attention and they actively are trying to offer things to meet me where I'm at in my like user journey. Last viewer question I got here is from Ho Lee <laughs> Fook. 
<laughs> Excellent name. Well right there. played. Well played. <laughs> Says, uh, what is an underappreciated aspect of the Halo games that people don't talk enough about? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> oh man, the dance. Shyway talks about the dance, but the actual like moment to moment gameplay in a one v one encounter in Halo is so rad. The way the strafe works, the the way the melee works, and the way your nades work. It's this perfect little design triangle where they adapted arena gameplay on a console. They slowed it down in a way and gave you the controls to be able to enjoy this really cool arena FPS. And they did it in a way where I still play the game for the dance. I go back to Halo 2 and Halo 3 in these games, and it's still there. You play Halo Infinite, it's there. In Halo 5, the dance is there for... Even the games that I don't enjoy as much, like that dance and that battle is still there. And there's no other FPS game that feels like that. And I don't think enough people really talk about it. I think there's something so simple and easy to pick up and understand about you break his shields and then you take him out. That is super cool. That's, that's yeah. That entire gameplay loop of Infinite or just Halo in general is so go just like, you go for the body shots, and then when you see the shields break, you go for the headshot. So it mixes up like your dynamic or how you're shooting players, right? You're yeah. strafing left and right, and more modern halos, you can you know crouch or crouch in there as well. Yeah, and just like just like yeah, the moment to moment gunfights within Halo are so unique that no other major shooter out there even comes close to it. They're so much yeah. more interesting, so much more dynamic, and it's something that like yeah, you just can't. You can't replicate any other way without just straight up copying them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it There's was like a respect to it, you know? If you, you run against somebody who's really good, their strafe is dialed, they're outplaying you. Yeah, I'm getting mad, I'm getting salty, but there's a level of respect where you're like, dude, he's got the same like access to the exact sandbox that I do, and he's just mastered it further. Like, that is really... I like that. There's like a nobility to that. I don't know. It's, it's a skill seedling thing where you're like, I want to achieve that someday. I mean, we see that a little bit like now with uh, Call of Duty as well, with like now they have a little more advanced moves with like the slides, like canceling, yeah. Uh, yeah. drop shotting, jump shotting as well, jumping shot around corners. But I always just feel like uh, maybe I'm just a Call of Duty boomer, where I just feel like there are a little more ways to cheese a gunfight rather than uh, outplay somebody, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's well said, the outplay potential. So think about like pros in this game. They have vastly different player styles. You you could look at Nated's play play style versus Walshies or Ninjas back in the day versus an Ogre, and it's so cool to see how people express themselves within the confines of this game. And I miss the. I feel like that element doesn't really get talked about as much. HCS is super rad, and they do amazing video packages. But during the MLG days how many people would watch like Puckett's top 10 plays, right? Those were so, that would just amp me up. And those had circulation way beyond like the competitive Halo scene. Here in Puckett, like get amped was just like none other, man. <laughs> hey, you've got the Lifetime Achievement Award for a reason, you know? That's right. Dude's a legend. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we're getting towards the end of the show here. We're going to go into the rapid fire questions here. You can answer as short or as long as you want, though. Even though okay. the rapid fire. <laughs> yeah. Favorite Halo character? Oh, dude, that's hard. Uh, I'll be boring. Chief. Favorite Halo weapon of all time? Railgun. Railgun for sure. Well, are we talking like Halo 4 or Halo 5 Railgun? Halo 4 Rail. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that should be a weapon that comes back in Infinite for sure. That would be really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, what weapon is everyone sleeping on in Halo Infinite? Oh, dang. To get some love, the commando can be a monster, but unless they're gonna like give it a little bit of attention, uh, you can still you can still use it. But no, I don't. I don't know. I feel like that sam. Everybody's got a pretty good sense of what the sandbox is. What Kev? What what is yours? What is what are people sleeping on? So yeah, I would say the Hydra would be yeah. a, uh, a weapon people are sleeping on. Even though yeah, it sucks against players, right? But yeah. The tracking ability is really good especially yeah. against vehicles and yeah. more particularly you say like a wasp or a banshee even yeah but the yeah. tracking on that and yeah i've come across it so many times where like if you're coming across someone who doesn't really know how to use the vehicles like super intelligently or is yeah. very well experienced with them you yes. can take out those vehicles easily with a hydra 
That's a and good point. Yeah. You do have to be pretty accurate to you know, get players and stuff like that. But it's also just a great like deterrent kind of weapon as well. Maybe not gain a yeah. kill. But at least you're like shooting at them to get them to back off, keep them held yeah. back to let your team push forward as well. Yes. Uh, so that's a good even, answer, man. I don't think the Hydra, yeah, it's not your typical like slaying kind of weapon, but it's a good weapon that does other things besides killing. Even though like it definitely plays like a weapon that should be killing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer, dude. Favorite Halo mode of all time? Uh, Ricochet. That's easy. Please come back. <laughs> oh, really? Ricochet? <laughs> dude, Halo 4 Ricochet, right? Like, mm -hmm. we wanted that thing back for the longest time. It was so much fun. Like, do people even know what Ricochet is? Like, infinite players? Um, I mean, I think it's like somewhat in the game, right? I think we played a little bit with like when they did like Griff Ball, you can kind of do it like that in Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like you're basically just like playing ball and you can throw it to different players and stuff like that. And you, you, the idea is to get it into like the, the goal, right? It was incredible. When that DLC dropped in Halo 4, uh, it was the Champions Bundle, I think, right? And it brought mm -hmm. the pit with it and the pit in Halo 4 looks really good and it played well. And then Ricochet, yeah, you basically throw a ball and it's just there's an end zone and you got to get the ball in there, but you could do such cool plays where you'd like jump thrust pack. And as long as you touch the ball as it's moving in the air, your character would just automatically pick it up. I love that mode. And I, yeah, TDM is the other easy answer. Cause I do like just run in slayer like TS all day long, but ricochet was creative and cool. And I feel like it, needs to come back plus you can have some cool counter plays where if you throw the ball at the enemy they pick it up yeah. and so you get to shoot them kind of you know plays like kind of uh, totally some smart yeah, outplay like, here, you hold this yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like yeah this I, that would be a fun one to bring back plus you get some of the cool like john elway plays where you just go long and just throw it in the score <laughs> zone <Elway. laughs> <laughs> and uh last rapid fire question the most important one of all oh what's your favorite halo game of all time oh i'm gonna say halo 2 you know, Halo for a lot two. of years, it was like Halo 3. But I'm really like, my memories, right, was Halo 2 Xbox Live matchmaking. And I had terrible internet where I lived growing up, so I had to go to a friend's house to play. And it was one of those rituals where after school, we'd go to his house, boot up split screen, and just run matchmaking for hours and hours. And it is like, no joke, one of those things where two hours would go by in a blink. And my memories are so fond from that era. Halo 3, like in my mind, like, perfect it's such a good synthesis of all the things but halo 2 was so ahead of its time and like forging the matchmaking paradigm the clan system the gameplay the maps just the vibe like it was it was chef's kiss so good what what about you kev uh i would just, i still have to go halo 3 i think yeah. it was like the culmination of the learnings from ce and to put together into yeah. a single game and also on top of that adding like forge theater mode as well uh oh, file yeah. sharers and stuff like that like it was just like it was a com it was a complete package like that yeah. game it was kind of insane like how well put together that game was like yeah there were some discrepancies like at the battle rifle and stuff like that but you know, just bump that damage up to 10 percent. you're fine yeah yeah you know, that's your 10 percent. you know i still want to see like a halo 3.5 i i think you are correct like that is the high watermark especially for that era of fps games a complete like Excellent campaign, great co-op, amazing custom games. The matchmaking hoppers were straight up dialed. Like you mentioned, the file share, the community, Bungie.net back in the day. It was something else. It really was a special moment in time. And then getting to watch MLG stuff as well. I think Halo could get back to something similar. I don't know if it will ever catch lightning in a bottle the way it did on like a cultural phenomenon level. But we can certainly like have a Halo game that is feature complete and and nails what Halo Three did so well. That like perfect little enclosed ecosystem way back in the Xbox 360 days. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And also introduced actual armor customization as well within yes, Halo Three. That's right. It's, it's a good menu system. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, good menu UI. Halo Three and Reach, I think, are just kind of like the, the 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 standard that people are just kind of expecting for a Halo game. If anything falls short of that, then it's just like yeah. it's a terrible game. But yeah, uh, <laughs> they set a they set a high bar, but it's it's doable. It's possible. Yeah, just uh, need to have a clear vision and uh, you know follow what people want kind of thing, I guess. But yeah, anyways, Mister BBK Dragoon, that kind of brings us to the uh, the end of the show here. Again, I really do appreciate coming on for the the first go around with this. Is kind of beta testing the whole thing, see how it plays out. Absolutely, thanks, man. I love getting to nerd out about Halo and just talk with you. And thanks for what you do, man. Like keeping the community informed and just like it's <laughs> always super fun if we're playing like Battlefield or Halo or just talking about you know YouTube dynamics and analytics and all sorts of 
crazy stuff. It's it's always really fun. So I uh, would love to talk any other time, man. Again, Nathan, thank you so much for coming by. Hey guys, uh, make sure you click out the pinned comments, links in the description, kind of stuff to go find, go subscribe to this boy over here. He, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to FPS stuff. Halo, uh, a little bit of Battlefield, a little bit of just a little bit of everything really, but mainly, you know, with a good with a good uh, solid base of Halo right, mixed in there though. Thank you. Yeah, renewed. I, this little break in December was good. I've got like a renewed Halo passion back in me. I like a lot of FPS games, but you know, I just come back to Halo. Mm -hmm. You know, love my Street Fighter, love my StarCraft, but Halo is kind of always that thing that's been there for the you know my long time now. It's it's, it's so silly when we start thinking about like 2001 to now, and you're like. Ew, like we're getting old, man. But Stop. that's okay. You know, <laughs> new generation of players coming in, and uh, hopefully they appreciate, um, you know, just how how big a scene this is and how long it's lasted. You know, mm. it's it's kind of rad, especially looking at some of these old pro videos that I've I've mentioned throughout the show. Like this game has history. This franchise got some really cool history, and there are definitely like sketch mentioned in the clip uh, that you were talking about when he talks about like future games, like good days ahead right the best could be in front of us right mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see hopefully that's it yeah that's the thing always with halo it's hopefully <laughs> not gone wood take your time no thanks for having me man i appreciate it and hope it's a good rest of your day you too man thank you my oh, thank you I messed cheers up. thank you man. <laughs> thank you thank you as well appreciate it. Bye. <laughs> have a good one man you too